we need to consider some uncomfortable truths. That they, we didn't fully know that you share my profound gratitude and respect for their service, their courage, and professionalism. General Milley, I can only conclude that your advice about staying in Afghanistan was rejected. I'm shocked to learn that your advice wasn't sought until August 25th on staying past the August 31 deadline. I, I understand that you're the principal military advisor, that you advise, you don't decide, the president decides. But if all this is true, General Milley, why haven't you resigned? Senator, as a senior military officer, um, resigning is a really serious thing. It's a political act if I'm resigning in protest. My job is to provide advice. My statutory responsibility is to provide legal advice or best military advice to the president. And that's my legal requirement. That's what the law is. Um, the president doesn't have to agree with that advice. He doesn't have to make those decisions uh, just because we're generals. And it would be an incredible act of political defiance for a commissioned officer to just resign because my advice is not taken. This country doesn't want generals figuring out what orders we are going to accept and do or not. That's not our job. The principle of civilian control of the military is absolute. It's critical to this republic. In addition to that, just from a personal standpoint, you know, my, my dad didn't get a choice to resign at Iwo Jima. And those kids that are at Abbey Gate, they don't get a choice to resign. And I'm not going to turn my back on them. Uh, I'm not going to resign. They can't resign, so I'm not going to resign. There's no way. Uh, if the orders are illegal, we're in a different place. But if the orders are legal from civilian authority, I intend to carry them out. Statement and the memoranda that I wrote back in the fall of 20, one of the ones uh, that Senator Reid mentioned early on. Specific We left behind thousands of Afghans who served us alongside of us who were vetted and approved to come here. We brought out thousands who really have no particular connection, about whom we know nothing and cannot be effectively vetted. You now have female troops who have been assaulted. You have Afghan evacuees committing sex crimes at Fort McCoy. What, what are we to make of this? What steps are we taking to ensure that thousands of Afghans about whom we know nothing are not going to be a menace to our troops at our military bases and to the communities into which they're about to be released? Well, Senator, I'm certainly aware of the allegations, and I take the, alle the allegations very seriously. And I can assure you that uh, our commanders uh, at, at our bases have what they need to be able to uh, protect our, our troops and our, our families that, uh, that work and live at those bases. And I, uh, I'm in contact with General Van Herc, the NORTHCOM commander, who has overall, uh, who has overall uh, responsibility for the, for the operation uh, on a routine basis. And, uh, and this is an area that he remains cited on. All right, I've just got one final question. Look at the United States military was tasked under the 2002 Bonn Agreement to train, man, and equip the Afghan army, or best military advice to the president. And that's my legal requirement. That's what the law is. Um, 